Hello, Shafiq here. Shafiq Charles Villasanti, um, confidence empowerment coach, author, blogger, public speaker, and obviously most importantly, author of this book here. And this is obviously a series of vlogs, if you like, of how um, I lived with and I, I overcame living with a mental health condition and how most importantly, I am passionate about breaking down those taboos and stigmas um, that are associated with it and to help people, friends and families and those suffering with mental health conditions uh, not to be fearful because I've been one of those. And as I've always said, I am the survivor of two suicide attempts. Um, yes, I said that as, as flippantly as it is like, put the kettle on and make a cup of tea, please. Um, that I am the survivor of two attempts. The first one had been in 2016 and this, sorry, the first one being in 2006 and the second one being in 2016. And, uh, if this is your first time watching these uh, videos, uh, welcome. Um, they do uh, follow in some chronological order. So this is the fourth video. So there have been three more before that. So please go back and, and follow it. So you get to know a little bit about me and my story. And today we're going to be talking about um, who do you talk to? For me, I was diagnosed with chronic anxiety and chronic depression. On both occasions, depression was uh, was flagged up. So in 2006, it was uh, chronic. It was chronic depression, not just depression. It was chronic depression. But in 2016, it was chronic anxiety and chronic depression. And for me, I often felt like, or I did feel like, it was a a stigma. It was a taboo. It wasn't acceptable. And for those ten years between both attempts, I was pretty much carrying that stigma um, in my locker. You know, I mean, that was pretty much it. I felt like I was defined by um, what had happened in the past. I felt I was defined by um, my condition, my previous mental health condition. And that previous mental health condition had ultimately um, served me no favours because I hadn't moved on from it. Because I hadn't spoken to anybody about it because in 2000, and six, I pretty much said to my wife, I don't want anybody to know about this. So it's only my, my wife and my parents that knew, and then latterly my, my eldest brother. And then in 2016, um, because I had nobody to talk about it to, or anybody of any understanding of it, of course it was going to rear its head again, because I, I hadn't dealt with it. I mean, I'd been given prescription medication, and, and periodically I'd go and get my prescription, and if I was feeling low, I'd take them for six months, then come off them again. But... The low mood is, is how you're thinking. The low mood is um, not so much a deficiency. It's, it's, it's an inability to, to see through and to action and to address how you are feeling. Um, and for me, uh, medication did make a big difference in, in stabilizing me the second time. Um, and um, it, I guess it did aid my recovery. But most importantly, um, my recovery was aided by talking. And as it's outlined in the book, there's no shame. Um, I've spoken to psychiatrists for a long time. I've spoken to healthcare professionals for a long time um, in my recovery. I've, I've been to all the groups. I've spoken to occupational health through work and HR, um, who, let's be honest, um, have a, an opinion on what they where they see you but for me it was always where they saw me coming back into the workplace so i always felt like there was a bit of a, a timeline that i had to conform to um, but most importantly it was opening up and being honest and frank and transparent and relatable and on both occasions i spoke to my wife now i was lucky enough um, to have the support of an amazing wife and i'm still with my amazing wife we've been married 21 years so just to let you know there that even if you have had uh, a mental health condition um it doesn't ultimately affect the marriage you have to work with it and you have to be transparent and i'm hugely grateful for uh, my recovery and where i am now as a, as a confidence empowerment coach blogger public speaker and author for the support my amazing wife has shown me but for me being able to speak to her was me being able to unburden myself, to unload the, the, the baggage that I had with me, um, especially second time round, because I had never addressed it. I'd carried it. I was carrying on for those 10 years in between as if everything was okay. 
Um, there'll be good days, there'll be bad days, there'll be good weeks, there'll be bad weeks, there'll be a good year, there'll be a bad year. But the bad years are always that much worse than normal bad years because I felt that everything was going to snowball again. And what would happen if it snowballed to the point that I tried to do what I did first time around in 2006? Um, so when it came around in 2016 and I thought to myself, you know what, Shafiq, this has got to be, this has got to be a wake up call for you, my friend. Um, you need to, you need to deal with this and address this. Um, I spoke a huge amount to my wife. Now, as I said in recent presentations um, and seminars, um, my wife's not medically trained. She doesn't have a PhD in, in neuroscience. Uh, she doesn't know anything about prescription drugs, but what she does have and what you will have here as, as friends, as families, as individuals, as co-workers, there's like two of these and two of these and one of these, you have the ability to listen. You have the ability to, to show that you care. You have the ability to have understanding and you, you, we all know what it's what it's like to be scared. We all know what it's like to be fearful. We all know what it's like to be uncomfortable. And then when you start to do that, then as there's somebody opening up, you realise that you're not the only one. That there are people out there who have a an understanding. Now, even though you might say, well, that understanding doesn't take them down that route or route for us Americans, or you Americans over there across the pond. Um, it makes no odds because in every time you open up your mouth, every time you unburden yourself with it and every time you, you speak, you're letting go. Because for me, leading up to those both attempts, I didn't speak to anybody and I was just burdening myself and weighing myself down and getting more and more terrified of what was going on and more and more terrified and more and more terrified and more and more terrified that on both occasions it was a snap decision that I tried to do what I tried to do. So talking and opening up is crucial. And it can be the most terrifying thing to say to your loved one, I'm having these thoughts, or I try to do this, or I don't know how to cope. But it's more terrifying that legacy that you will leave if you don't talk. And that obviously only comes to me or has only come to me with, with the clarity that I've, that I've um, created or I've discovered in myself since my last attempt. But my last attempt ultimately was that wake up call where I said, Shafiq, you can't be carrying this baggage anymore. You need to see people. And I, over the sort of two months, my two years or 18 months, probably two years of getting myself better to, you know, um, to create the business, um, I realized I never spoke to so many people. When you speak to lots of people, you realize that there's lots of people out there who have felt like you. So you're not alone. And I could say that between 2006 and 2016, it was, as I've said in previous videos, social media was in its infancy. You know, the uh, biggest thing in 2006 was like Friends Reunited. Um, you know, where's that gone? Um, so I didn't know who to compare myself to or who to reach out to. You know, Google was, you know, Google was Google, but, you know, it wasn't like it is now. So those nearest and dearest, rather than you being terrified of letting them know what's going on, they need to know. And if you want to keep it away from your nearest and dearest, well, then fair enough. That's completely your prerogative. And I understand because you don't want to worry them. But you need to speak to somebody who has your back. And if you're looking at this as somebody who is worried about an individual in, 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 your, in your life, then don't be fearful about opening up that conversation. Don't be fearful by saying... John, Jane, Elizabeth, Rupert, Jeremy, um, Jenny, whoever it might be, how are you doing? You don't see yourself. Don't mind. Don't mind me asking. Do you? Is everything okay? Because in that instance, that could be all that person needs to say. Well, I'm not really. I'm struggling. I don't know who to talk to, and you can really make a difference. So there are so many people out there to talk to. Um, even in the UK, the Samaritans, NHS hotlines. Um, in work, we're, I'm really passionate about trying to get um, uh, mental health gurus into the workplace. Or somebody you can turn to, safe safe houses, quiet corners, if you like, where you can open up and be confidential in what you say. But most importantly, start to unburden yourself. And obviously in later videos, we're going to be talking about the emotions you go through, the day-to-day -day living, so on and so forth. But most importantly, it's all relatable. So thanks for your love and support. As I always say, please subscribe. Please share, please like, please comment. I've got to get this out there via the algorithms on YouTube. 
in a big, otherwise these videos will be lost, these relatable videos will be lost, and by, by the interaction of your good selves, um, it all helps to, to pop up on the, on the first pages, if you like, so people can really, really get an understanding, and most importantly, people can um, overcome these challenges, be it family and friends or individuals that are struggling. Thanks for your love and support. Catch up with you soon and look forward to hearing from you. Cheers. Bye.